Five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. In St. Augustine, there's a magic shop in that old town area. Mm-hmm. And I am a sucker for that stuff. The, the young man in there, he will do stuff. He'll make a dollar bill float. And I'll say, how do you do that? And he'll say, very well. <laughs> and he always gives me the same answer. Then I'll pay $20 and I'll get a piece of thread and say, no. That's it? A piece <laughs> That's <of> right. <laughs> I'm always amazed at how a magician can do his job or her job. We, we had a lady magician, remember, lives in town? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, she was fabulous. Well, we got two magicians on the phone, and they are going to be in the villages a week from Tuesday and a week from Wednesday at the uh, Sharon L. Morris Performing Arts Center. Beautiful theater, by the way, not to uh, mention the, the uh, caliber of the shows that they invite. And one of them is coming up, uh, like I said, a week from Tuesday and a week from Wednesday. Um, I think it's 7 o'clock each of those two nights. So put this on your calendar. The magicians are young and strange. That's not their description. <laughs> That's their names. Richard Young and Sam Strange are on the phone with us. I can't wait to see their show. Good morning, guys. Thank you for being on the air with us today. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good morning. Pretty good. Where are you right now? Here in New York City. It's a lovely day. Nice. So do you do you do, you do the same thing? Like, how do you find tricks? Is is it hard? I mean, do you have to make them up? Like when I watch the Penn and Teller thing where they say uh, fool us, I'm always fooled, and they're never fooled. <laughs> we were very lucky to be on that show, actually. Were you? Um, so yeah, we've been on it twice. Both times we failed to fool them. Uh, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, we're going to try again someday. But uh, with regards to how you come up with tricks, uh, in London, where where we're from, um, there's a place called the Magic Club, so very exclusive magic club. They have a library of magic books going back hundreds of years. Really? So the old saying: "What old is will go there and look at old ideas and then bring them back and." them for, for a, a lovely audience like the, the ones that are hopefully going to come to us. Although shows. I have to say, that magic shop in Orlando does seem like it might be worth checking out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, the kid is going to sell you a piece of thread if you want to find out how he f- that dollar bill floats. <laughs> I, I don't know how I didn't see the thread before I paid the twenty dollars. It was like, a, and, and every time I did the trick, everybody said, "Well, there's a thread there." These <laughs> are <laughs> tricks, not miracles, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, this is something that, according to your bio, you've been doing since you were children. You both had such a passion for this. Yeah, we have. We've known each other since we were sort of in our teenage years, and we grew up learning magic together, actually, which is nice because we've got a deep-rooted friendship, which helps us get through the highs and lows of putting on theatre shows, but it also fostered a competitive environment between the two of us, each trying to outdo each other. Oh, uh, that's, the, so, that's uh, the secret to the Beatles. Isn't that the secret to the Beatles? They were uh, competitive? Mm-hmm. That's, they were, yeah. yeah. So uh, are your names really young and strange, or did you change your names? Yeah, uh, I'm Richard Young, this is Sam Strange. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you ever been to uh, the, the villages, to our part of Florida? Uh, no, uh, we've been very lucky to go to uh, the theme parks in Orlando uh, on, va- <laughs> on vacation, but this is the first time we've been to the villages. We're really excited. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you're going to love the theater. It's just a beautiful theater. The The audiences are going to eat it. You know, the audiences are from all over because we have a lot of transplants here. So they're sophisticated living in what looks like the middle of nowhere. But, they, they're, but they're from New York, Chicago, Detroit. They're from all over the place. Mm. Well, we're so excited to be back to be, uh, we're so used to performing for British audiences who actually are a little bit cynical about magic, and American audiences, we just love it because you guys are so enthusiastic, and you're into it, and you embrace it for what it is, which is just spectacular fun, So cannot wait. And you guys seem to incorporate a lot of humor in your show. Well, yeah, I mean, the beauty about being a magician is that the, the magic stands, the stands its own right so anything you can contribute in where humor is fine because if it's not funny you've still got the crutch of the magic to fall back on you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Uh, do you like uh, it when uh, people watch you close up or do you prefer just to be on the stage where they're a little further back I you know what what's wonderful about this show is actually it has everything <coughs> in it so it's not just us in the show there are three other magicians as well there's the close-up magician who does the, the the type of magic you've just mentioned there we have a mind reader and also we have a guy who does magic with animals on stage as well uh, doves like a dove act a traditional uh, dove act and so that's what's great about this show is that you know you're going to get to see everything and it you know we love everything and hopefully because uh, it's such a varied show you guys can uh, enjoy every aspect of it as well all in one evening you don't have to go to five different shows 
at the five different nights. Come and see our show. I, that's right. Yep. The, yeah, this is called. Um, oh, the what's the name of the whole show called again? The Champions of Magic. Yeah. yeah. Champions of Magic. Yeah. Oh, nice. And do any of the other magicians do tricks that you wish you knew how to do, or do you know? Does everybody know how to do everybody else's tricks? Uh, yeah. No, it's wonderful feeling when you're a magician and you're fooled by a trick. You know? So uh, yeah, it, it's all very. Uh, it's all taken very seriously backstage, and the, the secrets for the different acts are, are kept separate. So when we watch bits of the show, we're fooled too. It's a really lovely thing, you know, because really without the secrets of the magic, there isn't any uh, really? there isn't wonder. But that, might, that might sound like they were, that creates a bit of a division backstage, and what I'm about <laughs> to right. like a bit of a cliche, but it is a family environment back there. Everybody gets on so well, and we do bits of the show where we're performing together. We do a big cast vanish at the end and hopefully you get a nice sort of family feeling British show uh -huh. oh, I can't wait to see it so so I, I I'm not really good at uh, floating the dollar but I do have a trick I'm good at can I tell you what it is go for it I can turn my car into a McDonald's <laughs> 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 Hang on, we're gonna we're, we're write that down. Hang on, give us a second. <laughs> <laughs> Do you both continue to ev invent different illusions? Um, yeah, you know what's uh, lovely actually is the very first trick we ever learned together is still in the show. It's actually the trick we did for. Penn and Teller on the Penn and Teller Faller show and uh, because we do grand scale illusions and they're very expensive when we started when we were kids we didn't have money so rather than a big elaborate box we, we started with a cardboard box and rather than swords that are expensive we have these wooden stakes which we got from a DIY store and it's actually the trick we've been doing the longest so although really? actually now do you know that we can you know create new magic actually we still but in the show do the very first thing we learned together as well so again it's a varied thing wow the, the people who have dedicated their lives to the craft of magic do more for us than just entertain us although that's the biggest thing is just entertain us we love that entertaining thing but you know what you also do you also show us the phonies like the people who can do a mind reading trick and make it seem like they're really reading minds the amazing Randy is he still alive? He he showed us <laughs> he showed us that that oh, that guy Yuri Geller was a was a phony. Yeah, yeah. and it's amazing actually. There's a good, there's a good uh, wave of that that comes through the magic community. Is that um, there's a difference between a, mag a magician and a psychic in the sense in the sense that when a magician walks on stage, the un the audience understand that they're not making a claim that what they're doing is right. real. You know, this is sort of that accepted. You know, you, we know it's a trick, but we're going to enter into the spirit of it. Whereas a psychic and all of those fraudulent guys will uh will, are making false claims so so there's a good number of m magicians uh, james randy included and darren brown in the uk is a big um, advocate of debunking uh, non-scientific stuff and uh, yeah it's a nice wave of stuff coming through yeah and, and i think that's a, a service you provide to the rest of us who can't see through it because i can't see through it i couldn't even oh see the string on the on the dollar <laughs> you got stuck it in with, with, the, with the string on the dollar so yeah gullible i think <laughs> gullible is right yeah. Uh, children are so impressionable, and you both are such great role models, both on the stage and off the stage, with your very positive "I can do" attitudes. Oh, that's very sweet of you to say. Yeah, I mean, I think the kids are so so important, aren't they? And um, you know, the way the world is today, you can Google the answer to everything, and actually, magic's the last thing really where you can't do it. And so, what we're able to do is make everybody feel like a kid. So although the kids come to the show and love it, the grandparents come too, and they're surprised actually with how much they love it at the end because actually they just brought the grandkids or the parents just brought the kids. But everyone enjoys this show. Everyone likes that feeling of wonder and, uh, you know, a moment of astonishment, which hopefully we will provide if you, uh, if you come out to see us on the 10th or 11th. Uh, October. Absolutely. Uh, guys, I, uh, you are definitely, we're looking forward to having you in our neighborhood. Thank you for coming to our neighborhood. Uh, for those who want to see uh, magicians, young and strange, and the other magicians that uh, we didn't mention, but they're all part of the Champions of Magic Tour, which will be in the Villages Tuesday, which is a week from this Tuesday, October 10th, and Wednesday, October 11th at 7 p.m. at the Sharon L. Morse Performing Arts Center. Uh, thank you, guys. That was fun.
Oh, no, thanks, Robin. We look forward to seeing your floating bank. <laughs> 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 thanks. thanks. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Thursday, plenty of sunshine, just a few clouds high, 88 at the coast, 94 inland. Clear to partly cloudy Thursday night, low 71 inland, 76 at the coast. For Friday, some sun followed by clouds with a shower and thunderstorm around in the afternoon, mainly near the coast, the high 85 at the coast, 92 inland. Saturday, clouds, some sun and humid with a couple of showers and a heavy thunderstorm, high 83 to 86.